Here we go. Welcome, welcome. Lovely. Fly by white livery. Very nice. Let's go ahead and get all this on. I'm not bothering with that sim today. looks okay for what we're going to be doing. So, we want a circuit altitude of 3000. What's the Q&H? 1017. One, so, a couple of circuits, maybe a touch and go in the middle. See if we can uh, do this. It'll probably break. Uh, let's have a little look. Departure we don't want. Uh, we don't want an arrival either, um, except for the ILS of 26. So I wonder what that looks like. Okay, invite Astra. Let's see. Uh, we don't want no. St we don't want any star. If I select May, that should just go little box. Oh yes, that'll do. We'll insert that for our flight plan. <laughs> Hi, welcome. That seems to be quite nice. I won't bother with the rest of this. ILS frequencies in. Uh, don't need to worry about that too much. But we've got tons of fuel. Let's get rid of some. That's the one we want. Let's go to the performance page. Good, that works. V1 disagree. Good. Uh, that's interesting. Runway 08 right. What's the wind? 230 at 10 knots. Don't want that. Departure two six left. We don't want a SID. Cool. That's pretty neat, and we'll just manage it ourselves instead anyway. 
So, APUs available. And let's get a beacon on. We're not on VATS in, we're just going to crack on with the testing. Rock and roll, shall we? Uh, right, we need Pushback Express. Uh, we are, yeah, we are testing uh, a couple of the go-around bugs that people were Rocking mentioning. Go ahead, flight deck. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger, release the parking brakes, please. Some ground proximity warning system errors parking and things like that, released. so hopefully we get the right call-outs at the right time. Let's go ahead and get engine 2 started. So we're moving away back from stand 12. As we do that, uh, I'll show you guys the charts. There's ground movement chart, but the one we really want is uh, the ILS. And effectively, I'm just going to fly uh, a manual circuit taking off and heading back like so. Uh, first one we'll do a touch and go, so we'll land, touch down, take off again, uh, the second time we'll do a go around. Engine 1 start. Live weather with the unreal weather as well. So it'll be a nice short video, it's going to be no more than 20-30 minutes, so I hope. Might be a little longer, but we'll see how we go. Uh, we'll just wait for engine 1 to start up now as well. I'm not going to worry about taxi lines or anything for today. And we'll kill the pushback there. New sounds are in as well today. Pushback complete. Set the parking brakes please. Thanks to Boris on the Discord. Or Hotshot P as his username is I think on GitHub. Let's just go and light everything up shall we, get all the lights on. Okay, Engine 1's avail. So we've got Engine Mode Norm. And we can kill the APU as well, close the bleed and master switch off. Let's get rid of cross feed. And we want ground support is armed, flaps one, and park and brake off. Let's go. Say so let's go. Still got the tug attached. Even though it's not visible. Thanks, and you can disconnect and go to hand signals. Thanks, have a good flight. See you later. Let's go. Try again. Uh, test circuit, so um, I'll show you very briefly the picture again uh, on the window capture. Uh, we're going to take off, turn left, uh, turn left again, fly downwind, and then turn for a quick finals as well. Uh, as we did on the video that I uploaded earlier today. Uh, oops. My attention's all over the place today. Over the grass. Uh, as we did on the um, in the Cirrus earlier in a video. So not that sim, so it will just be a usual line up for the runway. And we'll just take off ourselves. Take off checklist. On auto brake max, cabin check. <laughs> this is the most rushed because I'm trying to get it fit it all in before I uh, need to think about going to work. Looks like the view's changed again. Anyway, let's see how we get on. Neutralise that nose wheel. 
pop the stick forward a bit. I'll press the cabin check, even though it's not really red. Let's go. We'll have to take off flex, even though my throttle keeps jumping forwards. So going to be straight up climb, upwind to 3,000 feet. Just to break gear up. So we're going to climb to 3,000 feet. We're going to turn left, um, heading 180. We don't want managed heading, but we'll uh, just turn ourselves. This is where the autopilot gets interesting. And uh, we're going to want, we'll just do 210 knots for today. Uh, 200 knots. Okay, so we're up. Yeah, I can't quite say. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> We've got Gatwick just off in our. Uh, uh, 9 o'clock or through the window and uh, we're now flying what's called the crosswind leg so we're left crosswind now I'm just making sure we're all good and you can see there the aircraft almost put itself into approach mode which is good let's go ahead and fly left downwind so we want zero 08 Two zero eight uh, two. I can't quite remember the exact course for the runway itself, so we'll do that, and we'll go to flaps one because we're now in approach mode. So we'll slow ourselves down to one hundred and eighty or so knots. And we're going to touch and go, so I'm not going to. <laughs> uh, Oh, I couldn't even say if I was or wasn't, to be fair, if, if that was the case. So, here we go. We're now flying left downwind. And we keep triggering that rad out, 2500 warning, because of the terrain below. So, we're tickling that at the moment, causing that to trigger lots. But that is sort of some of the things that we are testing at the moment today. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, join us as a frequent flyer. So we're still flying that downwind leg. It's the exact same principles as the uh, video that we uploaded earlier on today. Um, in the little Cirrus SR22. Uh, we flew that from Bristol, we're doing this in the Airbus today. Just almost sort of prove that you can do it in any aircraft. How are we looking? Make sure that rad nav page hasn't changed because we need the ILS frequency for the ILS approach and uh, quickly input this while we're finally let's see, uh, 230. This is unreal weather so it's the latest Metar. QNH 1017 Temperature 12 while well, we just fly the end of this base leg before we make a turn in. Uh, this doesn't matter what the transition altitude is because we're already below it and we want 100 foot for our minimums. Okay. How are we doing? So, a couple of minutes and we'll be doing a touch and go. Which, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, when we land, wheels touch down on the ground, and uh, we then clean some of the flap settings. Still rolling down the runway, and then we apply power and take off again. Could have constraints modes on, but we don't really need that. And I'll flick over to the ILS tab. 
and what we'll do as well I'll just start to descent down to 2500 because we're not going to fly the full ILS approach uh, that we can see here we're actually going to aim for about five six seven eight miles for finals so we cut it short keep it nice and sweet and you can see we're just intercepting that glide slope there now it's probably about five miles away you can see that final approach point and let's start our turn on left base so we call up on tower here saying Gawick Tower uh, whatever the call sign is, as Speedbird 38 or whatever left base and our intentions would be a touch and go so we're going to put flaps 2 in because uh, we're actually cutting short a final approach Gawick's not too far away from us and I'm just racking my head to see if we've forgotten anything I don't think we have crew in the seats, not that it's uh, important we don't have any on board so we fly that left base very briefly looking for that runway staring almost at the diamond there on the primary flight display because we don't want to creep underneath um, <laughs> I'm definitely not American. Uh, we don't want to creep underneath that glide, uh, above the glide slope, because then we're going to be battling the aircraft for our descent. So we're going to see what the ground proximity warning system does when we initiate a touch and go. Uh, and then we're going to initiate a go around for the second circuit and see how it behaves then as well. Uh, so those of you wondering what we're doing, we're testing... Uh, some of the fixes to the ground proximity warning system for the A32NX mod uh, where uh, I'm on their quality testers team along with a couple of others like Flight Simmer 7700 that's in the chat. So I'm trying to manually manage uh, our turn here. Let's have a little look. So I keep Gatwick in the distance in our view. I'm just trying to manually intercept that ILS. Definitely giving the aircraft plenty to think about. Cool. Now, interestingly, because we've been selecting headings, we need to make sure that magenta wheel, um, the blue wheel, sorry, the blue out, blue triangle rather, need to learn my shapes again, uh, heads back to a relative position for us that we're going to need for our second circuit. So we'll stick that there for us. That should be pretty much runway heading. So now we're on our finals leg, so it'd be uh, speed, Gawick Tower Speedbird. 28 or whatever our call sign for the day is. Uh, finals on the ILS. 26 left. Touch and go. And then we'll be cleared for a touch and go. I'm looking at chat. But I'm also very busy managing the flight. So we're descending now through the glide slope. We're going to reset our altitude to 3,000 feet. and we're going to want gear down spoilers armed and uh, we could probably afford to go flaps full now as well I'm not going to bother with auto brake because we're not going to slow down so we're going to touch down at our landing speed and then we're going to crack on back up into the sky and I'm hoping all of this here doesn't really wipe although we haven't used the nav display but it's nice to have some visual reference. The view's definitely changed again slightly. <laughs> Very true. I've got my second screen coming tomorrow, so I'll uh, I'll be even more proactive uh, on on the chat and things. Uh, although this one's a particularly busy video for me today, so I'm trying to squeeze a lot in, whilst also obviously focusing on the test at hand as well. So we're looking at ground proximity warning systems to see what happens. So we're nicely on the ILS. You can see there on the primary flight display the diamonds are level. We're actually slightly above the glide slope. Only ever so slightly. It's the first time I've done a touch and go in this actually. 
Uh, I'll just make sure I've got everything set up how I want it. Gear down, signs on, cabin ready, spoilers arm, flaps full. And our speed looks good. Position on the glide slope's good. What is our V speed? 120 for landing. <laughs> I know, magic pop ups, they're great. Nice and stable. What I will do actually, I'll uh, I'll do a for the second one. We'll do a touch and go, um, but I'll actually cut the base leg shorter, so that then we're too high and we then in effect chase the glide slope to try and uh, try and match the glide slope. But we we fail, so we have to go around. So nice and stable still. We'll go manual control. So I have control. You can see we've got a heading 260 set there on uh, the manual heading select. Just reminded myself because we've deactivated the autopilot. 400 feet, nice and stable still. It's Gatwick version 6.1. And uh, you can tell I'm concentrating <laughs> because I've gone silent. Above. There we go, that's our minimums. Uh, coming up shortly, 100 above our minimums. Which should come now. Minimum. There we go. So we're committed. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, oh, floating a bit there. So, we need to clean those flaps back to flaps 1, 1 plus F, and toga. Up we go again for our touch and go. So, 140 or so from memory was our V1 rotate, so there we go, and we are up again. Not going to lie, right? <laughs> my heart is beating like mad. Uh, over 180 knots now, so we'll get rid of those flaps and we can uh, disarm the ground spoiler, which has disarmed itself anyway. Leave a climb and let's reactivate that autopilot, shall we, guys? Climb back up to 300 feet, 3000 feet rather. So I'm leaving it there on that setting for the green dot speed, trying to hold that. I hope so. That'd be great if it, if we if we get 350 subs, that'd be amazing. So we've got gear down, uh, gear up. Sorry, F spoilers, flaps, everything nice and clean again, and um, we'll turn 180 degrees due south. And you can see how we've committed past runway 08 loads because we've taken off and it's tracking the ILS because the same runway in either direction uses the same frequency. So we'll see that change back to 2.6 left once we uh, meet the downwind leg. Nice one, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Not been to Holland myself. It's definitely on my bucket list of things to do though. So there we go, there's our... We're back crosswind again, so left crosswind for our circuit position and report. So it'll be Gawick Tower Speedbird 28, left crosswind. And it's zoomed us up to 250 knots again, so let's, let's get rid of some of this. And we'll start to turn, because we have jumped in speed a fair bit, we'll turn downwind. Try and manage, if you're going to fly circuits, um, even in this, try and manage your position relative to the airfield, so that you're not flying too far away. What we'll do is put in a little bit of speed brake to help slow us down, I think. And I'll activate approach phase again. And then I'll go back to managed speed. So we hold that green dot. So we didn't have any issues there with the ground proximity warning system. That's good.
what I'll do here actually is I'll fly down to let's see 1500 feet so we're going to test the ground proximity warning system now as we get closer to the ground so I'll just put it in open descent I'll open the spoilers the speed brake so that we can uh, we can descend quite rapidly so we're flying a left downwind now for runway 26 left you wouldn't do this normally but we're testing uh, we're testing the uh, PR I've got a short memory so uh, <laughs> I have to repeat myself if I, I might forget in the instant what I've just been saying so forgive me let's see we should go to commit down to 800 feet shall we So this one's going to be a go around. So we'll set up as if we're going to land normally. So we'll go speed brake, uh, auto brake max. Interestingly, that's not selecting. That's I think because we need gear down. So we've got 1,300 on the rad out, which is what I'm watching because that's our altitude from the ground itself. And you can see it's picking up the ILS for 26 left now as well. Let's see what we get for the old ground proximity warning system, shall we? I have got filters on abusive language, so uh, don't bother. Too low terrain. There we go. Too low terrain. 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 300 foot from the ground. 290 Too low foot. Terrain. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. There we go, that'll do. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. set up again for our go around so we're going to climb back to 2500 feet for now where's the airport right off in the distance so let's start to turn in shall we <laughs> Probably, have we just buzzed your house? So we'll do a go around for this one and then we'll do a landing uh, and that will do us for today. So then we'll, we'll have done a bit of both. There's the runway. <laughs> You'd have had a hell of a surprise then. start to turn in. We're going to want 260 set. So what about go around then? 
we need to have a quick look at the charts. So we're going to take off and the go around instructions here are climb to 3000 feet straight ahead until we pass 2000 or that inbound DME for runway 08 which is basically the end of the runway then we turn left heading 178 degrees then as directed by ATC they would ordinarily route us back towards Mayfield and then back up for our second approach attempt but I've had it on VATSIM where they've also just done a circuit like we've just done so we'll do that and pretend that's their instructions so we're leaving it messy to give the aircraft something to do and uh, we'll start to think about declaring our missed approach or go around as we get closer but we'll set up as normal <laughs> especially if it was a Ryanair flight at 3 in the morning I wouldn't be too happy we'll see how this tracks itself back onto the ILS as well actually to see how good that does Interestingly, auto brake uh, max doesn't activate, but that's correct because you shouldn't use it for landing. So that's obviously a new update. So we want medium or low. We'll go for the low. It's got us slightly left of the centre line. I don't think it's too far off actually. So this is going to be finals. Two six left. Uh, to land, which would be our intention, but we might have to go around. <laughs> there we go. How's that? Squawking 7500. Well, I could squawk 7700 for flight simmer. So we've got gear down, signs on, cabin ready, spoilers on, flaps full. We'll just uh, leave it on the ILS for now. We need to set our go around altitude of 3000. And uh, what's the runway heading? 258 degrees. So I've just flicked the manual heading select on the heading tog. Ready? Uh, basically, yeah, uh, so RTO, uh, that's the only time max would be selectable on the auto brake in the Airbus. It's actually doing quite well, it's got it back on the centre line, which I'm quite surprised about. So it's going to be the same principles that we did in the go around tutorial that I uploaded, I think it was yesterday. How late shall I leave it? Ooh, it's quite shaky, isn't it? It's like wind shear. Hundred above. Okay, now we'll go around. So Toga. Gear up. So it'll be Speedbird 58 going around. Let's reactivate the autopilot. Give it 3,000 feet, and we're going to fly runway heading. Well, the instructions were fly uh, to 2,000 feet, and then we've got to turn 178 degrees. 2,000 feet, and then we'll turn left at uh, 178, wasn't it? There we go. So 178 degrees is in, and uh, we'll just keep to 180 knots for this one. So because we haven't landed, we've still got ground spoilers armed. We've still got auto brakes set to low. So all that's ready to go for the next uh, attempt. Yeah, that's it, yeah, so the Boeings have all got an RTO select 
on a, a dial that you can choose which is quite good as you can see now for our go around we're actually a lot closer to the airfield because we've we already had height and speed on our side so we were able to just uh, zoom straight round for 2,000 foot and then make our left turn heading 178 and ordinarily we'd be routed to Mayfield which you can see there on the nav display but 75% of the go arounds I've committed after about a minute or so of flying in this direction we get told to turn left heading 085 degrees normally or 080 Uh, I hope I hope not. Um, I did watch the Q and A yesterday. It was really informative, really good, quite promising actually. Um, and it it will come when it comes. But I, I would imagine because they're building the model and everything manually themselves, there wouldn't be a mirrored text texture issue, because they'd be they'd be coding that in themselves with the model. So I'd like to think that we would be fine with that. It'd be fantastic when it's released, it'd be really good when that comes out. And yeah, there's a shared cockpit out at the moment actually for the A320. Uh, it's on their Discord, uh, on their partnership tab I think. That's really uh, going to be quite good I think. I've got to try that. Give it a couple of weeks, I'll probably give it a go. So, we're back on our downwind and uh, Will's house is getting some real good soundproofing test. how we're doing on the MCDU. That's all still as it is. What I should have checked really is uh, if the MCDU was showing the go around tab. But I was too busy flying the plane. It's all to break low, landing lights, ground spoilers are armed. We've still got approach phase activated because the aircraft knows we haven't touched uh, wheels on the ground. Uh, on their Discord, but the link is on my Discord as well, uh, which you'll be able to find in the description. So let's do 080 now. Uh, a little late yet. Still got time though. I think the raw comments haven't been. Uh, haven't been spammed by yourself yet, squad. <laughs> cool. This one's going to be a landing runway 26 left with the ILS. So we'll have done one touch and go, which is quite good. We'll do a landing. Uh, we've, we've done a rejected uh, missed approach go around. And we're going to commit to a landing now properly. So the ILS is switched back to 26 left, which is good. And you can see we're uh, well above the glide slope at the moment, so we want that diamond to track above us. If you're just joining us, welcome. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you click that subscribe button while you're here. Just below. There's that glide slope indicator there coming up the primary flight display and on the nav display as well and the V speeds and all that haven't changed we've still got that landing speed of 119 uh, in fact it probably has come down a little bit but we've burnt a lot of fuel in these two uh, the three circuits that we've done today and there we go we're just heading below the glide slope there now which is nice so let's start turning left base. I think there's an app. Um, you both spawn in the same aircraft, I think, on the ground individually, and then you you open up this port. I haven't really looked at it, but the settings you need to open up some ports, I think, and uh, then there's an app that gives you uh, gives you the ability to decide who's in control of the aircraft at each time. Um, 
so the, the other person can't then just start flicking all the switches I think but I haven't really looked into it I must admit I think when things are really early on in development uh, especially things like that I, I tend to let a couple of people try it first and see what they think so we've left flaps 2 in for this because uh, I've not really gone above 180 knots it gives me one less thing to do for the approach as well as you can see we're almost uh, in line with the runway so I'm now going to put it back into manage speed mode start slowing the aircraft down let's start to turn in you want to intercept an ILS uh, around 30 degrees or so so we're turning from left base onto finals now there's a runway coming up into our view into our line of sight see now we're starting to track that localizer and we're just below the glide slope we'll hit approach mode on and we'll capture that as we descend so we go the last bit of action for today and we're eight mile finals now that's quite a good question actually I'm not I'm sure someone could give that a go actually I'm not sure if there is a limit on how many uh, people can fly the aircraft. But if you can have two, I'd, I'd imagine you'd be able to have three. Let's go flaps three. So we're passing 2,500, uh, we're coming up to about 6 miles now, so we'll go gear down. We'll select full flaps. So it looks like we're nice and stable on the approach. We're letting the aircraft fly with the autopilot as well. <laughs> no, he, he isn't in the title. Should be. I should have put it in. Uh, cabin check. There we go. That's popped up. So hopefully some of the A32NX developers have been watching this. Um, particularly the guy that's actually created all this. They've been making some fantastic progress and it's given us something that's actually flyable in the sim as well on VATSIM yeah if you could pair up with some real A320 pilots that would be incredible in the sim and then yeah, you could just sort of sit and learn I suppose and hop in and join for uh, some elements of the flight yeah, that's all looking nice a little jitter there as I was trying to pan around Got auto brake on low. Still from the go around before. We've got a missed approach altitude of 3000 set if we have to go around for any reason. <laughs> I'll try and butter it. I buttered th the uh, the touch and go, I think, was okay. Although the, my critics are you guys. Uh, but I felt like it went okay. So here we go, our final landing for today. Three miles finals now. Everything's nice and stable. <laughs> You're adding the pressure. <laughs> if you haven't got the A32NX mod, make sure you check the description. There's uh, the link to the Fly-By-Wire Discord server for those guys. Uh, I think they've got, they've got their own YouTube channel now as well, I believe, uh, where they do episodes like they did yesterday uh, with information about the A380 and things. 
Oh, I've not had that glitch um, myself. 500 foot coming up. I have control. So, three circuits, one touch and go, one go around, and now our final element today, the landing. So the flight director is actually off, actually, uh, just noticing. It's telling us to pitch up three degrees, but I think that might be more for flare. Uh, because we're actually on the glide slope nicely. It's 100 above our minimums. We'll get our minimums call out in a second. Stable. Minimum. Look into the end of the runway. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, oh, there's another bit of float. And we'll put our reverse thrust on. So we had auto brake on uh, medium uh, low there. So we're in their official uh, livery. <laughs> I'm sure you are a pro. Yeah, not quite centre line. I felt like the uh, the little wing dip thing was coming in as well, so I started having a little internal panic. So there we go, we are down. Let's bring those flaps up. And we can go ahead and start the APU. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Every every time I'm not on the centre line or touch down on the touch down strips, I'll lose subs. So yeah, that test seemed like it worked pretty well. The, all of the ground proximity warning system features that have been tweaked. We didn't get some of the issues like the don't sync. Uh, that cut out quite quickly after the go around was initiated. Although I'm not quite sure why it kicked in in the first place because we were still flying a smooth and stable approach. OX 6.1 is definitely uh, worth getting. It's free. Let's get on that centre line again, shall we? Hopefully you've enjoyed the ride. So it just goes to show as well, um, if you have to go around or perform any touch and goes or anything, uh, on VATSIM, it's absolutely fine. Uh, the charts help as well. So as we saw at the very beginning when I was reviewing the charts, uh, we've sort of briefed ourselves so we know exactly what to expect. So if the go-around does come, which it did, we can uh, go ahead and just deal with it. Same with the, go uh, the touch and go as well. Touch and goes are fine, they're just landing and taking off all at the same time. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Hopefully you've all found it helpful. The only reason why we can do all of this pretty well is uh, thanks to the A32NX team uh, and their their mod. Six point one for the old Gatwick scenery which is quite cool and um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to stick it over on these remote stands directly ahead of us I think uh, actually I'll taxi underneath the tower um, underneath the bridge on taxiway Lima that APU available has come on so those of you who haven't got this mod um, so Gatwick freeware scenery and uh, the default Gatwick airport instead of having the infamous north terminal air bridge 
which we can see on our right hand side coming up. Uh, it's just it was a block of buildings that blocked across taxiway Lima and uh, the guy that's created this for free has got rid of all of that. So on taxiway Quebec at the moment. Uh, I don't think you do, I think you could probably have uh, you could probably have um, I think you, some people use an Xbox controller or something similar. I've got a Thrustmaster T-Flight Hotas X set up with uh, rudder pedals and things, which helps quite a lot. So there we go. Let's have a little taxi underneath this airbridge, shall we? Now, do I go external cockpit view, uh, external aircraft view, or? internal. I think we'll go here, shall we? So we'll pop ourselves underneath the air bridge. Thank you. <laughs> so you can only get this scenery if you download the mod for it, but it is free, so uh, enjoy. Definitely get it, I highly recommend it. And uh, 102, 101, look at that, it's fantastic the work the guy's done. Even now with the taxiway markings as well for the stands. There we go, turning in for the end of the trip. So I want the taxi lights off, not the seatbelt signs that I just hit by accident. I haven't found where 101 is actually, although I've not checked the uh, I've not checked the charts for the stand. And that'll do us there. Let's go to shut down. Pull the beacon off and the seatbelt signs. Oh, we're actually in the terminal building now. Look at that. Through the glass. So if we use Pushback Express now, we'll be able to spawn all of the ground equipment. So these guys got 30 um 30% 30 off deal actually at the moment. With uh, Black Friday deal, so let's toggle the jetway. Let's call the baggage and the caterers and the power supply and now we can complete a turnaround if we liked Just do, uh, this is good, uh, so it's about 20 or so British pounds with a discount code um, but it's worthwhile especially if you want to do multiple things <laughs> right, I hope you enjoyed it, thank you everybody for tuning in be sure to click the L subscribe button as well and uh, you can join me now on Discord as well. I've uh, created a Discord server thanks to uh, lots of requests. See you all soon for another live stream in the near future. Thanks for tuning in.